Ahoy, legendary listeners. Welcome to another episode of the Halo Effect podcast. I am super, super stoked to have the incredible Reese on this morning. And I met Reese through a friend of mine called Tom, and he was just putting out this incredible energy when he was commenting on um, some of the stuff that we've been posting. And Um, And as a result, he's also a part of our life summit that's coming up starting tomorrow. And when I was just seeing what he was putting out there, I was like, I need to know this guy. He's got awesome energy. And um, as such, I just reached out. I said, hey, like, you should jump on my podcast. I want you to tell your story. I didn't even know what it was from, like, didn't know him from a bar of soap, basically. Um, but basically, Reese is a 29-year-old legend, in, in my opinion, and he grew up in Western Australia, country boy at heart, and has since gone on to do incredible things. He's ex-Navy. He's also a 10-time state champion in martial arts. He's a martial art instructor, and he has a huge, huge passion to just guide others through life to kind of do the same, like with the passion in coaching, teaching, lifestyle and living the best life possible. So I think that's something that we can probably all um, aspire to move towards. And we're all looking towards, you know, wanting a better life or trying to live a life that's more passionate or um, more exciting or more meaningful, really. So with that, I would love to bring Reese in if the technology is going to allow us to do so. So I'll see if I can uh, request for him to pop in and hopefully we shall see Reese's face very soon. Hey, hey. What's going on? Not much. I just gave you an epic intro, dude. So I don't know if you watched it. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you so much for jumping on this morning, for taking that leap of faith and out of your comfort zone. I know it can be out of a lot of people's comfort zone when I'm like, hey, let's jump on a podcast. But you've been putting out this incredible energy and I'm like I need to know the legend himself so um there's a little bit of background noise is that my end or your end um yeah so uh, a bit about me um 29 born and raised here in Perth uh spent most of my life I guess to and from the country so um, the country is where I belong most of the time. Otherwise, it's in or around the ocean. I just find the ocean is somewhat tranquil. It's, it's got the ability, I reckon, to rejuvenate the soul and heal wounds, really. And at the end of the day, if I can get in or around the ocean, that if I'm in it, the sense of weightlessness feels like everything just washes off me. And if I'm around it, the sight, the smell, the sound, it's... It's pretty incredible. So yeah, I go to the bush or the beach to relax. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, I started uh, training in martial arts when I was four years old. Um, dad got me started really young. Thanks, Dad. Um, <laughs> and then from there, I continued my journey through martial arts still to date. Um, at the age of 22, I joined the Navy. Um, and went on to spend just over four years in the Navy. And from there, I came out and went straight back into the fitness industry. Um, so straight back into teaching martial arts, doing martial arts is something I'm really passionate about. I find the teachings of martial arts can just improve anyone's life, really, whether your goal is to lose weight or improve yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Martial arts has a lot to offer anyone, really. Um, and a bit more into my story, I guess we can go. Uh, in 2017, basically, I was um, actually murdered. So I met what? the end of my life then um, in 2017. I'm basically now a walking corpse. Um, so I tell everyone how that, how that happened. I was sitting in my lounge room watching The Walking Dead. 
and then I pretty much became one. you are if you play with fire you're going to get burnt so you know like being being the black belt being an instructor at the end of the day it did it did save my life and as well as my training in the navy at the time um due to my training i was able to react so it wasn't well i would say it wasn't worse but how much worse can you get <laughs> at the end of the day you guys so at the end of the day um you know, I always say to myself and my students, it doesn't matter how good you are, you can be a black belt or a white belt, you can be the founder of a martial arts style, but at the end of the day, if you play with fire, you will get burnt. Um, and it just matters, it depends on how badly you get burnt, I adapt. Um, but I'm back, <laughs> thankfully. Um, and the reason I tell that part of my story is that I want people to realise and understand that no matter what happens to you in life, you can come back. You don't have to stop doing what you're doing. You don't have to give up at all. You know, like death is a pretty big thing, but to come back from it and just to help people to realize that no matter what the struggles are, you can push through, you can make your life your own. You know, you have a choice. You can sit there and feel sorry for yourself and be like, poor me, why me? My life is crap. Or you can go out and make the most of it. You can share your story. You can inspire others to lift others up and motivate them to continue with life no matter how bad it gets. Um, and that's why I share that part of my story is because it got pretty bad. And I just want people to understand that you can come back from that. Reese, it um, briefly paused. Hang on a sec. It briefly, Sorry. it briefly paused. My video paused for some reason when you were telling the story of when you became oh. a a corpse when you were watching The Walking Dead. And I was like, I don't know if I've missed a part or if I've come back in and it's it's continued it. I was like, I don't know if technology was like, I can't handle it, but can you just tell that little part again? And I heard the rest of it. Yeah, sure. So um, I was sitting in my lounge room, um, yeah, watching The Walking Dead and I had someone break into my house and cave my head in with a maglite torch. Excuse me. So at that at that moment, I um I pretty much became a, a, a Walking Dead. Um, I ended up in a coma and I had coded out. Um, so I died, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, managed to get, come back gratefully, thankfully, and blessed to have a second chance at life. Um, and yeah, that was that that part of that one. Yeah, got that one. Holy crap. There are so many things as to why I realized why we've connected, even just in the terms of um, where you find peace and where you go to relax, like, you know, the ocean having that weightlessness effect. But then also that side of going into like government and very kind of strict structured work like and I, I was in a similar place for like four years and then I left and moved into like the health and wellness industry because it just felt like it wasn't the place to be for me at that time and so yeah and then you just having such an incredible incredible um willpower I guess I would call it to just keep going because like you said so many people can just either accept where they are and not do anything about it or you can go I am actually going to use this as my story to empower other people to get off their ass and know that they can do it and literally someone who's come back from the dead can do it like anyone can do it there are people who don't have arms or legs that are doing incredible things so I think you know I'd love for you to talk to where your mindset goes around between like making decisions and when you find yourself like making excuses for things and if you ever really fall into that pattern at times or whether your your mind game is really strong through all of the martial art training um i mean i guess at the end of the day we're all human and we we find ourselves making excuses every now and then we we just can't help it we um we find something that's a bit more on a, 
priority, I guess. And at the end of the day, an excuse, I guess, to me is another way of saying it's not a priority. Um, mm. You just want to find a nicer way sometimes to put it or um, a different way to put it, I guess. But at the end of the day, an excuse to me, it's just another way of saying it's not on my priority list. It's not something I value, mm. so I'm not doing it. Or I guess in the day too, it's one of those things where my mind's not there. You know, should I eat clean tonight? Yeah, I should. But am I going to eat clean tonight? Mm, probably not. Menu log's got a special on or something. I don't know. So sometimes it's just finding that comfort. But I feel like excuses most of the time are a bit of a not my priority, not something I'm going to invest myself in. Um, yeah, for me, most of my struggles revolve around... Um, I guess focusing on what needs to happen at the time. So sometimes my mind might drift um, and I've just got to rein myself back in and be like, no, hold on. This is my goals for the day. This is what I'm meant to be doing for the day. Now I've got to actually do it. Um, sometimes, you know, you can get so focused and there's always that little devil on the, on the shoulder going, yeah, but do this, yeah, but do this, yeah, but do this. And I think at the end of the day, it's putting that little, little devil aside and going, no, hold on a sec. I know what you're trying to do, mate. I'm not keen. I'm going this way. Um, we are our own worst enemy as well. You know, we're, as human beings, I find we're prone to self-sacrifice. And at the end of the day, we've got to push through that self-sacrifice and realise, well, no, you know, comfort zone again. And that's, I guess, yeah, that's falling into the comfort zone and something that I hate. Mm. Um, I don't hate many things a lot, but I definitely hate the comfort zone. I understand, you know, nothing works there nothing happens there it's good to be there if you don't want to move and it's understanding that and that's where again excuses might come from is oh i'm not comfortable doing this so i'm not going to do it and at the end of the day it's breaking through that comfort zone breaking through that and understanding that okay that might not be something i'm comfortable with but i should really do it because X, Y, Z, there's something at the end of the tunnel for me. And so I think one of my struggles sometimes personally is just breaking through that comfort zone as well. And I think many people could relate there because I know I'm not the only one that struggles with the comfort zone. A hundred percent, dude. And I think that that is like the key to success is living on the edge of comfort because as soon as we get comfortable, we get complacent. And familiarity is really beautiful. Like at times where you go, you know, you see a face and it's like, oh, so nice to see you. Or like even coming home, it's like, oh, I've got a bed to sleep in. If someone stripped that away, I can, I can pretty much guarantee my, I would, I know I would be okay, but it, it's that mind game of like, oh no, I can't do things or, you know, it's push you past um, I've been so complacent that I've got shelter and I've got food to come to. But as soon as you step into the discomfort, it actually causes so many neurological um, changes in your brain that I think, you know, is a really powerful thing. And, and people think so often that they're not capable of dealing with that. But And so they don't put themselves in that position. Whereas I reckon both you and I have probably put ourselves in positions where I'm like, I know I don't want to do that, so I must. <laughs> um, and and that's, you know, that's a part of like, I guess you've probably looked up at David Goggins kind of stuff where it's like you, you have to do things that suck sometimes. And there's so many things in life that are beautiful and amazing, but to strengthen your weaknesses and not just strengthen your strengths is a really important um it's an important trait of somebody who is who is to lead others i think so and that's a position that you're in you've got people looking up to you you've got people who are training under you but you also have somebody who helps you to train too so whether that's tom or whether that's the people who are your teachers in um in the martial arts world um, we've got to have like a variety of situations where we're able to both strengthen our strengths and strengthen our weaknesses. So, um, yeah, that's that's my view on it anyway. Yeah, that's it. Um, 
Yeah, I think Bruce Lee um, probably said it best. You know, I do not fear the man that's practiced 10,000 kicks one time. I fear the man that's practiced one kick 10,000 times. You know, and I think that that pretty much goes down that road too. You know, it's strengthening those weaknesses. If you're if you're weak at something and you know that, then strengthen it, practice it, get better at it. You know, there's only one way that you're you're going to get fitter is get fitter. Find how, learn how, understand how, and get someone to teach you, and then do it. You know, nothing happens without action at the end of the day. And the only way to get better at those weaknesses is to actually practice them. The old adage, practice makes perfect, doesn't practice makes progress at the end of the day. Perfection is, as human beings, perfection is out of our grasp. We we cannot be perfect, but we can get damn close to it at the end of the day. We can make that progress. We can get better and better and better at our weaknesses. And I think everybody in life should strive to get better at what they're weak at. Definitely. And like switching the word for perfectionist, you know, perfectionism, I would define as a really low standard of living because it's not achievable. But mastery, on the other hand, I think is an achievable thing in life. Like you can all, and I think that, you know, whatever I move towards, I'll always be moving towards mastery. And I'll, in my head, I don't ever kind of want to get there because that's comfort zone, right? Like as soon as you think you made it, you've got one million miles more to go and that's well that's how I view it um but I would love to know how you came to martial arts and whether that was like an internal thing that you found or someone recommended it to you or whether it was a particular teacher in that area because I can imagine it's been an amazing thing for you physically mentally spiritually emotionally so martial arts for me started when I was four. Um, thanks, right. Dad. Yeah, that's right. So yes. I've been training with martial arts. Sorry. I said that's right. You did say that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've been training in martial arts now for twenty, almost twenty six years, um, and been teaching and assisting since I was twelve. So for me, martial arts is, I think, a staple part of my life. It's been, uh, it's a lifestyle as well. I tell a lot of my students that martial arts isn't just a sport you do on a Saturday or a Sunday, or it's it's not a seasonal sport either. It's not something that, you know, it has an off season and on season. It's like, um, yeah, no, nah, maybe that isn't martial arts. Martial arts, if you truly embrace it for what it is, is a lifestyle. It doesn't just enhance you physically, it enhances you spiritually, emotionally, mentally. It's got everything in one package, neatly and nicely delivered if you open your mind to it. Um, as an instructor, I've had so many students come through the door at times and you go, oh, why would you like to start training? And so sometimes the responses are the typical, I want to learn how to fight. Um, great. Awesome. Self-defense is an important thing in life, though that's not why we're here. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, yeah, the skills we teach you will prepare you in life outside these doors. However, the most important skill we teach you is that these skills are a last resort. It is mm -hmm. self-defense, not self-offense. And that should apply to people's minds as well. You know, your mind isn't there to attack. Your mind is there and you need to defend it. A lot of times we fall victim to the things, firstly, that we let in our ears. And I think through martial arts, it has helped you to understand a lot that the first thing we need to defend is what we let into our ears mm. as well. And that's a part of the, the mindfulness and spirituality teachings of martial arts is that we teach you not just to defend yourself with your hands up, but we teach you to defend yourself by blocking your ears or closing your eyes or shutting your mouth as well. Um, whether that's for yourself or for someone else, sometimes you just need to be quiet. You know, um, there's a reason we've got two ears and one mouth. <laughs> and that's, again, something else that martial arts has taught me a lot is that we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Um, so at the end of the day, for me, the lifestyle of martial arts has taught me a lot about life and has helped me through life, really. Mm. It's, um, I, we'll actually have to catch up in person because, yeah, you just have 
Like, I know we will, um, but it has so many crossovers with um, yoga and it's like that thing of when we're drawing people in as students, it's really respecting where people are starting out at their journey or their whatever you want to call it, um, their adventure into why they've started seeking a certain modality. So you, you got introduced at quite a young age, but a lot of people are coming in like, oh, I want to learn how to fight or I want to learn how to be flexible. It's like, yes, okay, well, I can give you what you want, but I can also give you what you need without me kind of needing to tell you. And I think that comes down to a skilled teacher because I'm sure you can meet those people where they're at and go, sure, like we can definitely teach you like the fighting side, but I reckon once they've done a few sessions with you, something will start changing with them. Like, oh, it's more than just physical. Maybe they can't pinpoint what exactly is happening like emotionally or mentally, but they, I, I can almost just imagine that a lot of your students are like, I just feel different when I leave your classes or I leave your sessions. So that would be the, the impression that you're leaving on them, which is really, really cool to hear someone else who is actually treating their passion as their lifestyle and not just um, a thing that you do on the weekend, like you said. So yeah. Um, I, I need to know more from you. <laughs> of course, hashtag JTLS. Hashtag JTLS, yes. <laughs> we need to add you on there, like an R in there. Um, so cool. <laughs> Reese, who are your teachers? Who are your teachers in life? So I feel like you, you know, you, you spoke endearing about your father who introduced you to martial arts at the age of four but have you had any like other teachers along the way who you've always looked to um as role models or has that changed course since you've kind of got your life back <laughs> um look the, i'm gonna say straight up the two most important teachers in my life have been my parents um and i think a lot of us need to um, embrace that. A yeah. lot of us need to actually understand that. And it, it took a lot for me as a kid to turn around and go, yeah, you got a point. <laughs> you know, a lot of us go, you know, bugger off, I don't want to listen to you. You're just you're just my mum, you're just my dad. You're just saying it to annoy me or mm. whatever. However, our parents at the end of the day do teach us probably the most valuable life lessons. Um, my dad taught me quite a few my mum taught me a lot i say they both taught me a lot to be honest i won't say one taught more than the other um mum taught me compassion love and humility um and dad taught me quite a few important things in terms of logic and outlook on life um one of the most important things he said to me and i use it day in day out all day every day is nothing worth doing not having is easy mm. i think he said that to me when i was about seven or eight and it stuck with me ever since i tell everybody who i train or who trains with me or who trains next to me as well uh whether it had been through uh through recruit school in the navy or through martial arts or through the gym you know someone struggling i'm like okay is it worth it yeah okay well nothing worth doing not having is easy so let's keep going yes um another important thing uh dad taught me was for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction i'm sure everyone's heard that one before totally and it can't be more true you know, at the end of the day, if I taught a student to throw a punch and they go out in the street and hit Bob walking his dog, there's going to be an equal or opposite reaction to that. At the end of the day, if I stub my toe, there's an opposite reaction that hurts like hell, especially when you beat a cop. Um, so dad taught me quite a few important, you know, little nice bombshells along the way. Um, uh, my other life teachers have been people like Jim Rowan, Goggins, mm. um, E.T., the hip-hop preacher out there, Eric Thomas. He's amazing to listen to. He's got mm. his energy, his drive, um, his story as well. All their stories are so powerful. Um, my other, my, some of my 
closest uh, teachers and also father figure role models would be my instructors. Um, and a shout out to uh, Kyoshi Sean Allen down at Margaret River Martial Arts. You. Um, Archie Wayne Spear at Spears Dojos in Wangara. These, these two men along my journey um, have been incredible. Wrenching Mike Waite, uh, Guru Mike Waite at Kali. Uh, he is an amazing instructor. These men have taught me everything about martial arts that I know today. Um, their passion, their drive, their their way of teaching is all different. However, what they deliver is a lot of the same in terms of their words match. Mm. And for me, learning of these men, especially as an impressionable young teenager, I needed those words to match, and they did. And through that, they developed me into who I am today. That's such an important point, Reese. Like the teachers that we have it's not just when they're performing on stage or it's not just when they're you know doing a martial art kick and they're you know owning it and they're in that team environment but it's when they leave the arena and they're still giving the same lessons they're still living the lifestyle of the words that they're they're teaching I guess so it's like practicing what you're preaching and and the other thing that I wanted to speak to was um, the equal and opposite reaction because I use that line all the time and it's as simple as saying yes to something is also saying no to something so it's like this continual like balance of things like whatever you're doing if you're you know super high or like super happy there's a reason that you can experience that and that's because you've experienced the low so it's like if you've experienced great rock bottom then you can also experience like the greatest like ecstasy ever. And I just, I truly believe in that polarity and the equal and opposite reaction, but it's not just within our own life and our, ourself. It's like our decisions, like my decisions today can affect someone else's life 10 years moving forward. And, you know, having that kind of mindset around things like, I'm sure that the, the martial art teachings probably bring in things like karma because I'm not sure what the actual philosophy um, within martial arts is, whether it's like the Tao or anything like that. But um, um, it, do, it does depend on what style of martial art you train in um, at the end of the day. A lot have different philosophies, but a lot share the same. Mm -hmm. And for me, look, deep into it it's about inner peace and harmony mm. whether it's harmony in your movements or harmony in your life it is understanding that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction it's about flow mm. it's about understanding that you have the power you know spider-man with great power comes great responsibility it's about understanding that through your teachings you become a better stronger more enlightened human being and through that, you have the power, though you should never use it. I love if you can that. Avoid it, you can avoid it. You know, so the philosophy and the, the understanding behind it all, it's, it's all usually got the same real deep undercross at the end of the day, is that it's about inner peace, balance and harmony within yourself and others as well. So Reese, like, you know, you were saying we're all human and we, we are, we, we have flaws and we have days that aren't perfect. So I'd love to know how you find the peace, the harmony and the balance in your life and how you kind of start your day. And if something triggers you, how you actually go about handling that and whether, you know, for the people listening, whether he's always perfect or whether he has times where he's like, oh, I didn't quite handle that well. <laughs> Like I said before, we're human beings. We can't, I, I believe we can't be perfect. Um, we are perfect in our imperfections is what makes us perfect at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and my, my days aren't always perfect or aren't always ideal. It's understanding that it's a day, whether it's an hour in a day, a, a half a day, you know, it's understanding that this is just a short moment. There are longer moments. There is tomorrow. Tomorrow is a new day. So if today is a complete write-off and nothing's gone the way I planned it, no, no, like the goal 
journals and I journal in the morning. Um, so it's one of the things I do. I also journal at night. Yeah. I journal in the morning. I wake up, I do my gratitude list. I write down at least a minimum five things I'm grateful for that morning, at least five. I do not put the pen down until I've got five. Whether it's as basic as I'm grateful to breathe. I, you know, Most of the time every morning, my number one is I'm grateful to be here. Yeah. That is something that goes in there every morning. It's that's number one usually. I'm grateful to be alive. Then I don't put the pen down until I've got five. However, once I hit five, I start my brain starts going, there's another, there's another, there's another, there's another. By the end of it, I've got 20. Yeah. And I've gone, oh, okay, there, there's a lot I'm grateful for. <laughs> um, and then I go, cool, my five goals for the day. They can be business related, they can be work related, they can be training related, they can be personal, they can be financial, whatever they are, mm -hmm. I do five goals for the day, minimum. Usually try to touch on one of each topic. From there, get up, usually have breaky, put um put a podcast on and get to it really. Uh I find one of the most important things and everybody excuse me, everybody in life needs to do this and that is a morning routine. Mm -hmm. Whether it's as simple as getting up, having breaky, you know, having a shower, your shave, brush your teeth, whatever, and go to work. But as long as you have that structure in the morning, you are more prone to be have a successful day. Um, Admiral McRaven, US Navy, he is an amazing man, and he's also someone that I would recommend people listen to and take his teachings. He's he's got such an empowerment among him, and one of the things he says is that the first thing you should do every morning is make your bed. Now yes. everyone's probably going, oh yeah, typical. You're in the Navy, you'd say that. Yeah, we have to make our bed every morning in the Navy. One of the teachings for that in, in defense in general is that it sets the routine, it sets the standard, it sets the pace. Making your bed in the morning is the simplest, most easiest thing you can do. Get up, tuck your sheet in, throw your, throw your doona over, neat it up, put your pillow back, done. What that does is that is the first accomplishment of the day. You've just accomplished something. You've just done something successfully it took you two seconds, but now you've set the rhythm. You've set the rhythm of accomplishment. You've set the rhythm of, a, of achieving a goal. And I find that the days I don't make my bed, and yeah, I'm not perfect, there are days I wake up and I forget. I will also find that those days lack in productivity. Mm -hmm. As simple as it sounds, the days I don't make my bed, I lack in productivity. Yeah. And I realize that. When I get home and I do my evening self-reflection, I journal what was good about today, what was bad, what can I improve on tomorrow, wow. what goals did I accomplish, what goals didn't I accomplish, and why. When I do that, I go, oh, first thing I didn't do, make my bed. Yeah. And then everything builds. <laughs> okay, I didn't accomplish that first thing, and because I've set the rhythm of every day, nine out of ten times, I make my bed. Mm. Subconsciously, my brain goes, oh, you didn't accomplish the first thing in the day, so we could probably slack a little bit. So I find routine, not just in the morning, but daily is important. Days don't go right. Cool. Don't dwell on it. Um, something I listened to in one of Tom's podcasts the other day, I applied it to my life, and it is absolutely incredible. So, Tom, thanks, man, <laughs> um, is can't change. Those three words, can't change it are incredibly powerful and I want to encourage everybody to apply those three words to their life. Do not stress over things you can't control. Mm. The unwanted, unwanted, unnecessary and unneeded stress. Yeah. You know, we should try to limit our stress completely in general, though everybody knows and understands that sometimes things get stressful. Though you can't change it, you can't change the situation, you can't change the outcome. Don't stress about it. If, you know, it's so much as you've said something to someone and now you're worried about what they're going to say back, you know, you can't change that. Don't dwell on it. The ball's in their court kind of thing. So can't change it. It's such a powerful three words that everybody should be saying it to themselves. Whenever something pops up, can't change it. And I think the little things like that will help people through their day. You're not perfect. No one is. Do not aim to have a perfect day. 
if you're aiming mm. to have a perfect day, your day's gone. It's if you're enough. actually striving to be so perfect, once that one little thing messes up, you're going to throw it back and you're probably just going to go, cool, that one thing's just thrown me. So if you aim to have a great day or do the best that you can do through that day, you'll push through the day. You'll accomplish something. It doesn't matter what it is. Just don't aim to have a perfect day because it won't happen. And you could probably almost frame that as like have a progress day, right? And it's like progress leads to happiness. And, you know, I love that you brought up the thing of like can't change it because one of the, the quotes by like Brene Brown, it's like, if you don't like something, then change it. And if you can't change it, then change your attitude. And I love that line because it's like we can change it up here and it changes our whole story and it changes the trajectory of the day, which is why I love the simple task of making the bed each day. That's a non-negotiable. So I have non-negotiables in my day wherever I am, whether I'm at somebody else's house, traveling at my own place, not feeling it. It's like you do that thing that you know helps you progress in the day, even if you're not feeling it in that moment. But, you know, with that comes, you have to have done it enough times, having consistency and discipline to actually start to miss it from your routine. So, so many people go, oh, oh, that thing doesn't work. It's like, how many times did you do it? It's like, oh, once and it didn't work. It's like, I'm not listening to you. Like, do it 30 times and get back to me. Um, and then we have a conversation. Do you know what I mean? And it's like having that kind. And it's like I'm not like that with people and everything. There's there's some people who can deal with that that blunt energy and who need that. But then there's others who need the, I guess that more feminine energy of like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna work through this and we're gonna go slow and and smoothly. And the whole thing with both of the fields that we're in, it's you know, you were even talking about death and I, I don't see death as a, a scary thing. It's a transition. So we have so many transitions through life, but if we're not dealing with our transition from waking up to making our bed, to transitioning to how am I moving into my work today? How am I, how am I turning up to journal? I can guarantee those people who aren't focusing on the small transitions in life are the ones who are petrified of death. Yeah, 100%, you know. Um, and it's one of those things mum always told me is the little things matter. Mm. And I, as a kid, I was like, mm, okay, <laughs> but don't the big things matter because they're bigger? Um, <laughs> and it was until I was in my late teens that I, I flipped that and I was like, no, hold on. The little things are more important than the big things. The big things are big because to me, I find it easier to manage. Yeah. You know, you can grab it easier, you can grasp it easier, but the little things are the little details that piece the big things together. Yeah. And we need those little details to be consistent all day, every day. And it's, it's like you just said, you know, someone says I've done something once it's like when they come into the gym or it's train uh, they're training I'm like oh how, how many times have you done that cut and they go oh twice cool <laughs> keep Let's going do it another 400 times <laughs> yes. and then you won't get somewhere right you know someone comes into the gym it's like okay cool how, how long have you been training for oh just a week okay I tell everybody it takes four weeks for you to see a difference Eight weeks for your closest friends and family, and then 12 weeks for the rest of the world. So if you're not seeing a difference in one week, awesome. You might feel a little difference. You might feel an increase in energy, an increase in output. You might be getting a little bit more sleep because you're working out, so you're ending up a little bit more tired by the end of the day. You might be sleeping better. Though if you're looking in the mirror or jumping on the scales and nothing's changed, keep going. Right. You know, I'm, I'm in my own weight loss at the journey at the moment and I've got to keep telling myself and it's, it's a little easier for me to understand and grasp it, you know, but keep going. I don't jump on the scales much anymore because scales lie. What I do is I do my body measurements, but it's keep going. Yeah. Nothing worth doing, not having is easy. If it was, everyone would have an eight pack. Everyone would be a fitness model. Everyone in the world would be fit and healthy and us trainers would be out of a job. 
we don't have no need for people in the health, fitness, and wellness industry because if it was easy, everyone would have it. It's not easy, but it's damn well worth it. A hundred percent. Like, mic drop, boom, there. Like, that is actually where it's at. And something that is also super important, which I love that you said you have in your journal, is documenting your progress. So document where you're at. It doesn't mean you you don't document when you're having a shit day. You document the good times, you document the bad times so that when you're having one of those, you can go, what was I doing? What was I thinking? What was I eating when I was feeling the best? What was I doing? What was I thinking? What was I eating when I was feeling terrible? So it's not just going, oh, everything's good. Forget about my journal. Um, oh, everything's bad. I'm going to write about it and get real sad about it. It's like, all look at the holistic picture of it so you can actually start to track what's happened over this week because, like you said, those little things, they're the things we practice in private before they get even half acknowledged in public, maybe. Like some people don't ever get that. And, you know, it's not something that I don't think some of the biggest leaders have ever strived for when they've reached that huge success. It's more about serving. But, you know, I think when you're in that early stage of developing something, you're wanting people to see what you've done and you're wanting the praise, but you need to love on yourself first. You need to praise yourself and go like, I got this. Like, I'm going to keep going because I care about me, not because I care what Instagram likes things about me or what rethinks about me it's like no because I care about my health I care about my well-being and I care about serving at a bigger level so um yeah it's uh yeah I think consistency documentation and like you said just keep going progress 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 yeah 100 percent Reese, what's your um, what's your jam out song like? What gets you in the zone to like vibe out and just like I feel like you've got an inner beast in there that like wants to party. <laughs> I do. Um, look, mine's fighter. Ah. Um, yeah, fighter by Christina. It's 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 a gratitude song. Mm. You know, thank you for thank you for breaking me but you've made me, mm. um, you've made me a fighter, you've made me step outside of my comfort zone and accomplish greatness. And sometimes, to me, it's the back psychological impact of that song, you know, it gets me going, it's like, yeah, cool, let's smash it, let's do it. <laughs> you know, it's understanding, like, you can't make anything until you break something else. Mm. It's like Lego. And I love my Lego. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I love my Lego. But if you want to make something else out of what you've got, you've got to break what you've got. And yeah. I know Jim Rowan touches on that a fair bit as well. Yeah. You know, it's it's about destroying what you are to become what you want to be. Mm. And to me, that song, Thanks for Making Me a Fighter, it just gets me going. It gets me pumped. It's like, cool, let, let's do this because it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. So, oh, yeah, my, yes. my jam out song is fire. I'm going to play that after our chat and I'm just going to imagine you raving to that. It's the best. It's, like, actually so cool because you can, like, drive to work or whatever. And um, I was saying this to Tom the other day. I was like, I would drive to yoga classes like cranking Eminem and it's like it seems like such a paradox to like the sort of stuff that you teach but it's like it helps you get in zone and um yeah it's like whatever whatever helps bring you that peace and balance how paradoxical it might seem or how random it might seem to someone else it's I think you know music and words and movement and all of that kind of thing it, it helps you just realign in your own body, like particularly if you're not able to be around the ocean in the morning or you can't, you don't have access to the bush, which, you know, resets you on another level. I think having access to tunes or people or podcasts is like such a great um, intermediary thing. And yeah, it's cool. 
Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. It's funny you say Eminem too, because one of his one-liners, and I'm sure you know what it is. I'm sure. You know, if you had one shot, one opportunity, and sees everything you ever wanted, one moment, would you capture it or let it slip? Mm-hmm. That is life. That yeah. is literally our life. You have one shot. Are you going to waste it? Are you going to sit there in a life of feeling sorry for yourself, a life of poor me, the victim mentality, or are you going to grab life and be like, no, hold on a second, I'm in charge of my life. This is my one shot and I'm going to roll with it. So I love that you said that because <laughs> that is also a big one-liner for me and I use it all the time. I've actually got it written up. You. Uh, like, at something uh, on, on my bathroom wall, I've got that written up because, you know, it's like I get out of the shower and I'm getting ready and it's like, one shot, mate, don't fuck it up. Yeah. <sighs> I freaking love that. I need to like bulk high five you right now. Um, so good. Dude, we will wrap it up. Um, but before we do, I wanted to know what's your latest podcast that you're listening to and what's like a hands down digestible book that people should read? Like they can't go throughout life without reading it. What would it be? Um, look, I am. I'm actually tracking back a little bit and reading Rich Dad Poor Dad. Ah, nice. Um, it's such a good book to read. Um, and I take a lot from that, not just in finances, but in mentality too. So Rich Dad Poor Dad is a great book. Um, podcast, hey, look, shout out to Tom. Woo! Um, the Soda Process is an amazing podcast. Um, and I've, learned, I've learned a lot from listening to that. Like I said, can't change it for example, is one of the many, many things that I've learned. Um, there were some things I weren't applying in my day. I wasn't applying meditation, but now I do. Mm. It's little things like that that Tom has mentioned in his podcast, The Soda Process, that is incredible. So I recommend everyone have a listen to The Soda Process. Um, jump on Halo as well. It's an awesome, <laughs> um, awesome podcast. Um, and, yes, yeah, so, yeah. I love that dude. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is one that I, I feel like keeps coming up. And you know, when you hear something enough times, I'm like, okay, got to read it. I like, I've heard it and I know, I think I know the, the the principles in it. But again, it's it's those small details that you pick up and, and picking up more than just the finance side of it. It's like, oh, wow, mindset is everything, isn't it, really? Yeah. You can... You can, once you change your mind, you know, it's like you change everything on the inside first. People always look outside to change things, but you should never look outside until you look inside. Change inside first because everything outside will change. You know, I heard it great. You can change everything inwardly first and then everything outwardly will follow. You are just going to love the life summit. Like so many, I just, yeah I feel like we're going to have so many cool chats there's going to be really cool questions coming through um but in terms of people being able to find you and find where they can either work with you or get in contact with you I'll include that in the show notes but would you just um tell them the best place for them to to get in contact yeah, cool. Uh, so you can either message me um, on Facebook, Reese's Tactical Fitness, uh, or Instagram as well. So it's Reese's underscore tactical underscore fitness on Instagram. And yeah, we can have a chat and go from there. I'd, I'd love to work with anyone who wants to improve themselves, really. And I understand sometimes the hardest, the hardest part is getting started. Mm. But once you get started and once you realize that the help and support is there and it's actually a lot easier and people think it becomes a lot easier and I just encourage people step outside your comfort zone come and chat to me if you have any questions about anything I'm happy and wanting to help just take that first step and I'll meet you halfway that's just yeah it's the best like if you're looking for if you if you even have that thought of like I want to do something else I don't know how to get there reach out to somebody like Reese like especially Reese he has been through so much and can meet you on any level that you're at and I know that he'd be comfortable enough if you know he wasn't quite your person to guide him through whatever you're going through he has resources of people that he can refer you to and I think this is the whole thing of 
reaching out, taking that first step of wanting to change. And it's like, you know, if you can't change it, change your attitude. It's like in this moment, if you're needing to snap out of a habit or snap out of, you know, some unhealthy way that you've been living that isn't leading to progress, stalk down Reese like I did. He is an absolute legend. He's got so much cool energy. He's a very real down to earth person. I didn't even realize the wisdom that you had until we chatted today. So I feel like I'm just buzzing off energy from our chat. So I'm super, super grateful for you making time today, legend. And um, yeah, giving all of your energy because he's got work. He's heading off to work, but he's fit this into his, his day. So I just wanted to point that out as well. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey. <laughs> we'll do it again. I know we will. So this isn't the last time, but again, reach out to Reese, Facebook, Instagram. I'll include them in the show notes and we shall see this legend at some point, well, in the Life Summit, but um, moving forward, he'll be on more podcast episodes to come. You. Definitely. <laughs> Have the best day, dude. Crank fighter. I will. Oh, I'm going for it. I'm going to. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you. Bye. See you later. <laughs>